happy to be in Beijing with Jeff Lee to talk about what he considers are the key regulatory developments in the Asia Pacific region. Jeff, what are you looking forward to to discuss with your industry peers and authorities in June at ChemCon Asia 2024 in Bangkok? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tito, you just mentioned that you came from Shanghai, right? Did you know that uh, they recently uh, deployed a, a pilot project for hazardous substance like traceability code? Yeah, that's a new thing. Actually, I was privileged to both talk with industry and authority on this topic, and we're doing our utmost best to get both of them in Bangkok to tell about the QR code uh, project on the traceability. So maybe you can explain a little bit uh, to the viewers what this is about. Yeah, maybe not too many details, right? With the introduction of MEM policy, they call the one enterprise, one chemical product, and one QR code. Ever since 2022, multiple local authorities have started a pilot for this hazardous substance QR code, with actually Guangzhou province as a pioneer. And uh, recently, Shanghai is very active. Not only they co-authored the two group standards, like the technical specification for coding and labeling of hazardous substance, etc., but also they announced that the pilot has CAM, they call a traceability code, from this year, actually 2024, right? On top of the information required or registered on the national online system, they are also requiring additional information, like a product name, like the batch name, or even the way bill, et cetera. These are in, required to be added and registered in Shanghai specifically, they call the HASCAM traceability code system. And the the traceability code will be viewed differently to different audience. So if you are a normal downstream user, you only see the normal information as you can see in the national NRCC system. But if you are official, then you can see you can see all the information submitted. Okay, now I think that's a quite ambitious project. So I really hope we can learn more about that in uh, in Bangkok. Are there other developments in China uh, that need to have additional attention? Yeah, regarding the chemical development, I think the emerging pollutant management continues to be the top priority for holistic chemical management in China. Actually, following the where planned schedule, earlier government set the schedule like a screen, evaluate and then control all these emerging pollutant. And we know that the first national survey for chemical substance for more than 4,000 substances have already been completed last year. And this is actually a milestone for chemical screening. And we also know that the government is now targeting to complete 20 substance, priority substance assessment by 2025. And this is actually the first batch of the priority substance. We know more will be coming. And at the same time, we also understand that uh, uh, technical capability building will be a priority from government point of view. So we know that they have already put efforts on the uh, computational toxicology platform and also the environmental risk management IT system. And the government also announced recently a 14th five-year plan for chemical environmental risk assessment and management standardization scheme. So we know that from, from that, we can expect the significant technical standards to be developed in the near future. And the very importantly, government is also promoting industry chemical like green development, especially the safe and alternative, a safe and sustainable alternative, right? As an important part of the emerging pollutant management. It's good to see that there is more demand for green and sustainable. That's also what we see across uh, uh, the region here in Asia, but also, of course, in the Americas and Europe. Um, therefore, at ChemCon Asia 2024, we have Sustainable Thursday, which is completely filled with all these sustainability uh, topics, uh, like safe and sustainable by design. Uh, but besides the Chinese topic in the Tuesday morning, we also focus on Korea, of course, with uh, the next K-REACH deadline coming up. Can you tell us more about Korea? Yeah, indeed. Actually, 2024. <laughs> is another important milestone for completing the registration for all 100 to 1,000 ton chemicals in Korea, which keep a 
industry quite busy, right? And uh, furthermore, I would uh, I would see that uh, by listening to the industry, Korea is making a lot of progress amending the regulation. They just uh, announced uh, important change. So from January 1st, 2025, for the new substance, the registration threshold has already been increased from original 100 kg to one ton. I think this is a very encouraging amendment, right? That would enable industry and also government to focus the efforts to those higher risk and higher priority chemicals. And also what I understand is that the uh, Korean government is also working on other amendments to, to ease the implementation of this regulation, including simply uh, simplification of certain data submission. Uh, of course, there is some, some concern like for the free rider, we yet need to understand it better. And uh, there was also like additional exemption, like uh, substance in recycling waste. And also they, they, they changed the reporting conditions for the substance subject to intensive management. And there's other changes like uh, the the toxic substance category and the, the designation. So a lot is happening in Korea. Yeah. So we have a whole session on it. The data sharing, data management is even a whole seminar because there's so much going on in the world also uh, at OECD and new guidelines of doing things. So really good to have that. Since it is ChemCon Asia eh, um, in Bangkok, there's of course extra emphasis on Southeast Asia's emerging regulations. Um, we hope to have many authorities uh, from Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, hopefully also Indonesia. What are, in your opinion, the key developments that you are looking forward to discuss with these authorities? Yeah, the, f the first two countries I, I would think about would be Vietnam and Thailand. Yeah. Mm. Because Vietnam and Thailand used to be active in developing chemical inventories while a bit silent in past year. Yeah. There's still a mystery like how Thailand FDA can coordinate with the DIW for the chemical inventory. And in Vietnam, the inventory is also tentatively on hold. Yeah, we know that uh, we still need to wait, in, uh, wait for the amendment of chemical law first because that is the mother law. We expect that the work will start maybe this year. Philippines actually is quite uh, active on policy amendment in past year. There was an overall policy review on chemical management. And also there's a recent uh, release of draft guide guidance on exemption of impurities. So that is very important. At the same time, uh, Philippines also issued some draft guidance on the, like, the CBI protection. Philippine government is also like uh, consulting uh, the, the guidance for the PCA designation. Yeah, that was a big, uh, big topic earlier, but uh, right now they are changing the scheme to engage the hazard categorization and also the volume elements. I'm actually quite happy or glad to see that the Philippine Authority dedication, their dedication on the further mod modernization of the chemical legislation learning from the global best practice for chemical management. So a lot of developments in the Southeast Asia area. Another emerging area, uh, at least for chemical control legislation, is India. And it's on and off. So what is the latest status on India nowadays? Yeah, India is always uh, a watch out <laughs> with the development of their like chemical management and safe, safety rule, right? Uh, but uh, in in past one year, we don't see much progress. But the India Authority is still busy. They are working on like uh, other chemical management approach. And the recently, they launched the uh, Chem India portal for collecting chemical information. But this is nothing related to the uh, CMSR. And it was designed to really save uh, industry cost as well as uh, support the research and the planning. Yeah, it's designed to collect uh, information from more than 5,000 uh, industries. Um, they, they, they want the information maybe monthly for all the chemical manufacturers in India. 
Uh, so that also, I think, uh, another way bring some additional burden for the industry and maybe also cause some CBI concerns. Okay, now let's hope that we learn more about that in Bangkok on India. Um, any concluding remarks on the APEC region? Yeah, generally I would say that uh, APEC, APEC region uh, is always a hot region for chemical management for years, right? I just want to maybe add a little bit for Australia since it was also quite active currently. And uh, Australia had uh, a stage three reform for the AICIS, basically also to ease the implementation for industry. So they are making progress. Australia is also busy on the ICH EM EMS program and uh, continuously seeking the comments and the issue the scheduling for, for different type of chemicals like Schedule 7 and Schedule 6. Okay, now thank you very much. All these topics and more will be uh, on the agenda for ChemCon Asia 2024 in Bangkok. Looking forward to see you there in June where compliance-driven companies and authorities, are, as P&G says, do something that matters. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. <laughs>